Hey guys, what's up? It's Stacking Chairs, a youth ministry podcast all about serving in youth ministry, whether it be youth group or youth camp, whatever God has you serving in, that's what we're talking about. I'm one of your hosts, Josh Paul Hamas. I'm joined by my fellow host and good friend, Kyle Gray. Hey Josh, I was just... uh... You were prepped. You were ready. Imitation is the highest form of flattery. Have I been imitating you or did you imitate me? No, I was just imitating you. Oh, man. So make sure you're watching. That's right. Hey, by the way, you can watch this on our YouTube channel or you can watch the little snippets that Josh cuts down. Josh, I just want to give praise where praise is due. You have done a phenomenal job. Oh, thank you. At at putting together those little clips. Yeah, I appreciate that. And if you are watching this, please uh, show a little love to Josh because, listen, there's not enough times that we thank the, the people doing the technical sides so that we get to enjoy oh, thank you, the Tom. entertainment side. That's with you. And I didn't even write that in your notes. That oh. was great. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was supposed to say, Josh, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we are joined by one of our camp crews because again, this is, this is camp. And so you may hear yeah. somebody talking in the background, the radio might go off. Somebody might walk in a door. You Expect might hear a it. loud bang or whatever. Um, Welcome to camp. Welcome to camp. And so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Miss. Tell us your name. Catherine Rodriguez. Catherine, where are you from? I am from Cuba. Well, no, from, from Miami. From Miami. Miami. Yeah, Miami. you're from Cuba originally. Cuba, Miami. Cuba through Miami. Actually, Miami past Cuba. So, yeah. um, hey, uh, what is your favorite thing to get at a uh, little Cubano cafe? Oh, coffee. Oh, Cuban coffee? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that is okay. so good. There, there was one that uh, when I lived here and I lived in Lakeland back in the early 2000s, I know I don't look that old, but again, you can watch these <laughs> things to see how old. No. Um, but uh, we used to go to this little Cubano cafe and yeah. every time we went down to Miami and it was like, it was worth the yeah. long drive because I knew what I, what was waiting for me there. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, for me, so my wife is from, uh, was raised in Guatemala. So what? we don't get like the, we don't go to the Cubano places. We go to some little Guatemalan oh. places and, uh, I'll say like, there's something about the food there that is not nostalgic for me, but it is for my wife and her family, but it is really good. And but I over time it will culture. be nostalgic for you and for my daughter, especially oh, yeah, that she'll grow up with that. I love, you know, that. it is crazy just to watch the way that God brings all the different situations and opportunities into our life. And, yeah. and, and I don't think he he wastes anything. In fact, I was reminded the no. other day, I was talking with somebody about actually a hard situation. And I said, listen, I have to continue to hold on to the hope that God never wastes pain. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, if he never wastes pain, then he never wastes all the other different things. And so, uh, and I said, my, my fear is not the bad things I'm going through. My fear are all the big lessons, but I list, I missed in the little moments mm. because I just didn't, th- didn't think that they were important. Enough. Yeah. There's something about learning about God's providence and, and how much he loves and controls all these things for his good and for his glory. And hey, really that sounds it. like a great segue to our podcast, but that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> today, we want to interview uh, <laughs> Kathy and, and just kind of say, Kathy, as a student, uh, what are you doing here this summer? I am serving in the media team. She's serving on Camp Crew. Camp Crew is a program uh, at all of our camps. You can check us out at camps.wol.org. But if you know anybody between the ages of 14 and 18, Mm -hmm. and they want to come and serve at one of our summer camps, uh, you can serve at the climbing tower. You can serve in the dish pit. You can serve uh, at landscaping and housekeeping. Pretty much any way that camp has to function. And we have camps in New York and in Florida. You can serve this end of the country or this end of the country. And you can serve actually all around the world. We've got an incredible program and, and here's what we do. We want to bring students in, not to just serve, but to serve them, to disciple them. Uh, so you have somebody that meets with you on a regular basis doing discipleship type stuff, uh, helping you just grow, asking you important questions, but also, uh, taking the knowledge and skill that you already knew about media stuff and helping you to deepen that. What, what's something media wise that you have learned this summer? Oh, definitely. It would be using Premiere Pro. I got here and I was like, Premiere Pro, what is that? I was like putting clips together and it was like, look simple at first, but there's so much like that goes into it. Yeah. And using cameras, I always put it on auto. Because wow. I never know how to use it. And oh, then man. here, I but not anymore. Like, hey, like by the way, Premiere Pro, if you ever want to come and be on the podcast, would love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> I just, we say that about everybody else. And yeah. I thought, Premiere Pro, come Premier and be Pro. on the podcast. <laughs> um, no, that, that's awesome. I love that. Uh, what has been, what has been something hard? Now, you don't have, you, you go as deep waters as you want, but what's something hard you've had to go through this summer serving? Hmm. It would definitely be walking in the heat. (laughs) Oh, that is fair. Florida is, is just warm. It's pretty warm. 
Hydrate, don't dihydrate. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Come on. Uh, what, what, what's something fun or, or funny that you consistently see happen throughout the weeks that you look forward to? Mm. I think it's just working with the team in general. Yeah. I love the media team. It's like yeah. the best people put in one little group. It's awesome. Uh, wow. Wow. That's nice. They, awesome. they're, they're a pretty cool team. Well, the they're a pretty cool team. Well, out of all the media people, they're the best media people. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're absolutely. also the, the worst only. media. <laughs> oh, and the worst. Jeez. Um, hey, so Josh, we had we had a couple questions. Kathy, we, yeah. we would love to hear from you just about your experience, gr experience growing up, uh, whether it's through church, whether it's through youth ministry, whether it's even through conferences and stuff. Just yeah. your perspective as a young person, because so, mu so many of our crowd or our audience yeah. are typically pastors, youth pastors, youth workers, youth mm -hmm. leaders. And, uh, and we can talk all about, yeah. you know, the people our that we're trying to minister to, do, or we can talk to one of the people that we're trying to minister to. Yeah, absolutely. And Kathy was gracious enough to be involved in the podcast and, uh, we're, I'm, I'm excited to hear her perspective on some of these questions we have listed out here. That's awesome. All right, Josh. So why don't you kick us off? All right. Let's dive right in. All right. So the first one, I kind of wish we had like some like music like in the like background. Like, no, 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 it's like, no, I'm no, like no, looking no, through no. my music here. I don't think I have anything that's like this style. <laughs> it's not. Okay. Uh, all right. So. Uh, what made you want to get involved in like your church in the first place? And and then what made you want to stay involved? Mm -hmm. um, and how long, I mean, give us a little bit of background. How long have you been involved in your church? Did you grow up in church? Like just, just give us a little bit of background on that. Yeah. So I was raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. And when I came from Cuba when I was four, I also went to a church in Cuba. I got here and I started going to church with my parents. Um, ever since I was really little, I've always loved like working and being busy and like helping other people. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really like for me being a little kid, I wasn't really thinking about it like, oh, I'm doing it for the glory of God. I'm just here. I'm doing it. Yeah. yeah. And so like, I, that's not something I really reflected on. Mm. Um, but then I started going to this awesome church called Sweetwater. And I love that the way that they did like ministry there, how they like allowed people to be part of like any kind of ministry, like whether it be like photography, whether it be the worship team, it was just yeah. so many opportunities that I was able to be a part of. And so just listening how like amazing the messages and how everything was, I yeah. just, I loved going there and I saw that I could build friendships and I was able to mm. just be a part of a church, a community that yeah. loves Jesus. Do you think that, and if you guys didn't hear, Kyle had to run out for camp, but we're going to keep going because I, I want to hear more about this. So, um, do you feel like uh, the leadership in that church had a large impact on that, on you wanting to stay around and be involved in that way? Or do you think it was more the relationship, relationships you made on the peer level or just curiosity, like how yeah. involved were your leadership into making you want to be a part of the church there? Yeah. The leadership in church was actually extremely kind. Like yeah. they tried so hard. They were like, what are you interested in? Like the moment I got mm. there, I was like, oh, worship, kids, this, that. And they yeah. were like, oh, let's put you here. So it was oh, like cool. amazing to see like people that were kind enough to like show me like yeah. how I can help and contribute to the church. So like intentionality of getting to know you, but then also intentionality in getting you plugged in then. Yeah. Gotcha. So tell me a little bit about like the areas you got plugged in and, and you know, where did you find, um, where'd you find, I guess, the satisfaction in that? Like, where'd you find the worth in that? Like, what was the point of being involved in those ministries for you? Yeah. So for me, when I started going to a church, I was like, just going to the church, like I said. Yeah. Um, and I was just helping out because I wanted to help out. And mm -hmm. so slowly but surely, after coming to Word of Life, having a great time here at camp. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I was literally at Word of Life. Oh, um, cool. I was already part of all these ministries. But when I went back home, I was like, wow, like, I really should be doing this like to glorify the Lord. Mm. And I should really have like more patience when I do this um, kinds of things. Yeah. And, Cause sometimes I would like freak out. I had so much stuff to do at school and, and work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was involved in the kids ministry, um, helping out with the kids in VVS, being the okay. missionary teacher. It was amazing. I love little kids. Yeah. And I was also helping out the media team. The media team is so funny how I, first got into it, it yeah. was a guy just holding the camera. And I was like, hey, like, that's a pretty cool camera. Like yeah. he's taking pictures of an activity. And then he's like, do you want to use it? I'm like, oh my gosh, a camera. <laughs> so I just started taking <laughs> yeah. pictures and that's honestly how I started. And the worship team, I just, I just got myself involved. They yeah. knew I sung, they asked me. And so we just started, we actually started our first worship band for the youth. Oh, it cool. It was like me and another person. And now it's just grown to a bunch of people, but. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. It was, it was just great how I got involved. Yeah. So did you, did you see a lot of the ministry that your, that your, um, 
the leadership in your church? Did they pull you into a lot of ministry internally in the church? Did you guys do a lot of ministry like outside of the church, like the building and the church body? Like, what did that look like for you guys? They would do a lot of like evangelisms. They would go out and okay. evangelize, um, gotcha. which was great. They did with the Dare to Share conference too. And it was awesome. Yeah. That was- Go Share Day and all that too? Yes. Okay. It was so awesome. Nice. I loved that. Um, so yeah, they would do things like that. Not as often, but every yeah. once in a while they would do it. And yeah, I was- Okay, was gotcha. Awesome to be a part of that. Yeah. So what would you say out of, out of those two areas? You know, you got to do the internal ministry. Um, how did that shape your idea of what ministry is? Like mm-hmm. now that you've gone through that, you got to work internally, you got to work externally. You had this involvement from your leaders. They they found your your niches and the things that you're good at and helpful with and helped you get involved. How's that shaped your view of, of ministry as a teenager? Because you're, you're yeah. 17. Yeah. 17. Okay. So as a 17 year old, how do you see ministry now as a result of your involvement in your youth group? Mm. Well, ministry for me, it was, it was always just like, I'm serving the church. I'm helping the church. Mm. I'm, I'm good at it. I'm just helping what I can do. Yeah. But slowly, like I said, when I came to Word of Life, that they yeah. gave this message on ministry um, and like serving in the church. I was like, wow, like I really just, I'm, I'm doing this wrong. Like I'm doing mm. it for the wrong reasons. And yeah. I like, prayed so much about it. I was like, I pray that this ministry that I'm doing, I may not take it like just as something I have to complete, like just as a task. Mm. And so it's really impacted me in my life because the more I join ministries, even though that doesn't like necessarily get me salvation, it does like, yeah. it. I don't know. It's just like, I'm helping like contribute to yeah. the kingdom of God and like just expanding his kingdom and helping in the church. So it's just great. Yeah. Ministering to the body. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the midst of being in the body. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Kyle, awesome. Kyle missed a little bit. Hey, hey I, I, I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> Don't worry, I told him. I told uh, him. Okay. I appreciate that. Hey, Kathy, I, I love that you're talking about your involvement um, and you're clearly passionate about it. I'm sure it's not always easy. I'm sure there were days that you're like, I really don't want to do this right now, but, but just even focus on the good side um, what has kept you going even when there's been Daisy, you've woken up and you said, I really don't want to, I really don't want to do this. I really just want to, like, it, it would honestly be easier just to stop. Yeah. There has been times where I've been so like tired mm. of, and just like, I don't want to go to practice. I don't want to do this. But honestly, like, I have one of like my really good friends and she is very, she has a very close relationship with the Lord and she has been able to help me so much with that. Um, she, I, she always sends me like verses and passages in scripture to mm-hmm. look at and just like, I think about it and I pray about it and that instantly just like fires me up again. I'm like, yeah. I'm doing this for that. Jesus and that's awesome for me. Yeah. So then that. why do you think more students don't get involved? Do you think that systems like what your friend does for you aren't set up? Do you think we're not opening the door for students to do more? Like, mm-hmm. like, I mean, if you, if percentage wise, uh, you know, d- why do you think more students don't do ministry? I think it could be also like mm-hmm. just not having accountability mm-hmm. too, like that, like mm-hmm. I had. And I know some churches can be a little, like it can be a little bit harder to get into ministries because there's like yeah. you get there and there's already people there yeah. for it. So, which is understandable. Like sure. it's a big church. Yeah. And so it it definitely is accountability. If I didn't have people that were like pushing me, like you got this, like remember that yeah. this is not like for you. This is for Jesus. Like yeah. you're working for him. Like this is amazing and an amazing yeah. experience because sometimes I would take it for granted. Um, sure. And I guess it's easy it to do so. That. That's cool. How, how about for you? Have you, have you ever, I mean, I know you and I have both, we talked about times where <laughs> ministry has been tough. Do you have, you, do you have somebody like that in your life that just kind of encourages you and keeps you going, Josh? I fortunately I have, I have quite a few people in that. And, uh, and I just, I have some close friends that I talk to when I'm feeling worn out, uh, especially when you're mixing. And that, this is outside of what you I mean. That's not your vocation. Yeah. Like Kyle and I have a unique experience. Wait, this is my job? <laughs> <laughs> where it's our vocation and our ministry uh, simultaneously. And uh, it, it can be discouraging, even if you're just doing it with your youth group or you're doing it as a vocation. And it's important that we surround ourselves with those people and have that accountability. Mm. Well, and I think it's so tough, Josh, because... <clears throat> I, I know the pull for times it, 
that I've been doing it. Mm-hmm. Okay. For instance, I did program at camps for yeah. years. There are sometimes I'm watching some of our program guys kind of up and coming and I'm like, I know what to do. I can just get yeah. up there and get it done. Yeah. But there's something about watching the joy of them learning to do that ministry yeah. that I got to imagine. It's probably hard that way sometimes even in the church yeah. and in any job, it's harder to bring on those people and to give them that opportunity. But I'm so thankful. And I love the fact that your church gave you that, that opportunity to do that. I, I would say for me, I, it's the same way. just having people yeah. encourage me. And- well, and it just reminds me, it's something that I've kind of like realized over the past probably, man, probably five years I've been slowly learning is, is it's important to put your entire effort into the ministry you have Mm. and do it with excellence. Mm. But the goal of ministry is not excellence. The goal of ministry is to minister to the body of believers first, to evangelize, to, to reach people and to help people and to, to be an encouragement to people. That's ministry's purpose. And if we're doing that with excellence, that means we're doing our best but if we're looking at others and saying, you know, but that, that's, I think that's another. But I was going to say, do, do you think sometimes that we, we sacrifice opportunity mm-hmm. at, at the, at the, the chance to do excellence or, you yeah. know, well, listen, if, if we, if we bring in other people, we're yeah. not going to be able to do excellence. And so they miss out. Like, like there's one thing that uh, a church that I was going to out in Texas for years, um, love that church. They started when a kid was in fourth, fifth and sixth grade training yeah. them and saying, Hey, what area of the church do you want to learn? Yeah. And so we had kids when they were in ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th grade, helping to run the soundboard for oh, the yeah, main yeah, yeah. church service. And this was actually like a pretty legit, like, sure. like operational wise church. We're not talking this small little town. you like, you just yeah. got to move this bar and press this button. No, like yeah, they yeah, were, yeah. they were running the thing. And actually there's a young man today, Cody Bland, Cody, I will take you on this podcast anytime you want. Come be on the podcast. Um, you know, now doing some incredible things. In, but that's where he got his heart yeah. for ministry because a church like Kathy gave opportunity, guarantee you didn't do it, everything with perfection, guarantee you didn't do everything <laughs> right, guarantee they had to sure. probably go in and, and clean up some stuff, but you learned it yeah. and, and they, they developed your heart to do that. And uh, uh, so Kathy, I, I wrote down some external questions. Uh, what is something that you're glad you learned uh, just Outside of ministry, personal growth, what's something that as you look back and you're still, you're going into your senior year, right? Yeah. And so as a junior, sophomore, freshman, even lower, what's something that you're so thankful that the church uh, provided for you or input into your life, uh, wisdom wise, obviously with the word of God that just has you where you are today? Um, Something I have struggled with was being patient with other people Mm. um, a lot of the time and just being able to like understand that there are people, I don't know what to say. Yeah. It's okay. Take your time. It, it's good. I think it would be patience. Yeah. yeah. No, that's honestly, that is, you're going <laughs> to, I think we're all learning that oh at all goodness. times. I had someone the other day uh, I meet with once a week who, who was helping at camp here. Yeah. And uh, we have like a discipleship kind of relationship once a week. I sit down with him and uh, probably week three, he said, he's like, Josh, if I, I was like, what can I pray for? Like, is there anything I can pray for you? He's like, pray for patience. And I said, I said, be careful because the last time I prayed for patience, uh, not the last time, but one of the times I prayed for patience, I ended up getting poison oak uh, for two weeks. I, I swam in, in poison oak as a joke. Why would you do that? It was, it, it said, there was a no oh. swimming sign that had been set into the woods and I was pretending to swim in the weeds to make my friends laugh. No swimming. And uh, <laughs> that week I got covered in poison oak for two weeks. I wasn't able to bend my arms without being in pain. It, everything itched. I was covered in bandages. Awful. And I prayed for patience at the beginning of that week. And I remember I'd have to take cold showers to try and like, to, so I wouldn't open up the pores so I could put on some medication and everything. And I remember just like crying in the bathroom, being in pain, being itchy, uncomfortable, mm. and thinking, I prayed for patience at the beginning of this summer. I remember doing it. And uh, learned plenty of lessons, and thank mm-hmm. God I'm still learning plenty of lessons. That journey of sanctification mm-hmm. still continues, mm-hmm. and I didn't mm-hmm. learn all the patience then. But I would say that that lesson right there is one of the many lessons you can learn being in the midst of, of ministry at any age. And uh, I do say, be careful praying for patience, because the guy I was talking with prayed for it, had me pray for it, and the next week he was like, I shouldn't have asked you to I pray for patience. <laughs> well, but, but honestly, how many times do that fruit of the Spirit— yeah. Do those things that we, we, we really would look at somebody and say, man, they're exemplifying Jesus. Mm-hmm. Those things were brought out through trials. 
Absolutely. They, they weren't they weren't brought out because yeah. everything was wonderful and everything went went yeah. perfectly fine. Yeah. Um so yeah, uh, well, let me ask you this. What's something that looking back you go, it's not that I didn't hear this, it's not that they didn't say that. So I'm not saying any disrespect towards my youth group or towards my church or anything. Yeah, of course. But this is something that I know I I missed, I wish I had grabbed onto or paid more attention to, or maybe it's something that they didn't talk about that you go, man, I really wish we would have, we would have talked about that. Mm, this is definitely something that they did talk about a lot, yeah. but every time they would do like little, like throughout the month, they would do like mm -hmm. little parts every Friday. And it was like sharing the gospel. For me, it was so hard. Uh -oh. I had so many, I used to be part of CYA, Christian Youth in Action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that works with TF and I would share the gospel with kids all the time. Yeah. But for some reason, just like sharing it with adults and like kids for me, gotcha. it was hard. Yeah. Not, not kids, but like teens, yeah, like sure, people sure. that actually, people your age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was just so hard and they would talk about it all over again. And I would just be like, sure, I get that, but I still don't know how to share the gospel. <laughs> and it was just like, and it was something that they like yeah. big, make a big emphasis on. Like our yeah. church is very big on like share the gospel with anyone that you see. Like yeah. it is a huge thing. But for me, I think that's something that I've always had a hard time understanding. Well, and soteriology, the, the study of salvation is honestly something that you are going to unpack for the rest of your life. Rest we, talked of your with, life. we talked with Cam last oh, week seriously, yeah. or two weeks ago. I'm sorry. <clears throat> talked with Cam two weeks ago about the deep truths, the things that we need to unpack and really dig into are the most fundamental truths. Yeah. And salvation is one that... As a teenager, I understand my salvation, my relationship to God, entirely, not entirely different. I mm. still understand the grace mm. and I have the foundation, but I understand it differently, especially as I go through the different stages of my life. Like when I got married, I understand my, my love and my connection with God as a marriage relationship to Jesus Christ as the bridegroom of Christ. Yeah. I understand that differently now than yeah. I did before I was married. And I'd say the same thing of, you know, obviously we're not throwing any shade at the church there, of your church, they pushed on the gospel, yeah. but... It's important that we continue that kind of those kind of those kinds of conversations and those kind of fundamental truths to make sure that we are are instilling the importance of right. those fundamental truths. Well, and it, and it, and it's hard because, um, I, I, in my time working with youth ministries, mm -hmm. helping churches to build a yearly calendar. Again, still strongly encourage you from yeah. one of our very first episodes: have a planning calendar, have a mm -hmm. yearly calendar, have a monthly calendar. Plan out what you're going to do, and then go going back to Brent's uh, time with us. The importance of teaching theology and teaching our kids. What do we believe? Yeah. Why do we believe it? Where in the word of God is it found? And what difference does it make in my life? It's so easy just to go, okay, well, every year we're going to talk about this. Yeah. Every year we're going to talk about purity. Every year we're going to talk about, uh, sharing the gospel. Every year we're going to yeah. talk about, but sometimes you show up and it's like, okay, right now when we're talking about prayer, prayer is the most important thing. It is the most important thing. There's nothing that ever comes close to how important prayer is. Mm -hmm. All right. Next sermon series, purity. Purity is the most important <laughs> thing. There's nothing. Okay. Next yeah. thing, sharing the gospel, which yes, all of those things are vitally, vitally important. Absolutely. But helping a student to understand that it's all a part of this process. Yeah. And, and then you get to the next year and you go, okay, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about prayer. Yeah. We're going to talk about purity. Yeah. We're going to talk about why, because we want these kids to get it. Well, yeah. uh, again, it's, it's, it's not just teaching that it's helping it be a part yeah. of their lives. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it sounds like they put you into opportunities to go share the gospel, yeah, yeah. which I, and that's a huge credit, that is huge, huge, yeah. huge credit. Yeah. So no, youth ministry is like, is like your golf swing. You know, you have to, <laughs> you have to square up your shoulders. You have to turn at your hips. You mm. have to keep your head down and watch mm. the ball. But if you only do one of those things, you're yeah. going to miss the rest. So you have to do all of them. And the yeah. more that you swing, yeah. the more it becomes your second nature. But you, but you know what I, I, I think I find most frustrating, Josh, yeah. are, are the windmills. You know, when you, when you got that like perfect swing, swing and the windmill, and it's about to go through the little house. Oh, I thought we were. I thought Mini we were golf. Doing. Yeah. Okay. I'm oh. the, yeah. yeah. I've been practicing my putt putt. Yeah, you, go. <laughs> you know, anyways, no, I, I, I love that. And you're right. There's, it all has to work together and it's gotta be a fluid motion. Yeah. And there's, it's not just having the right club. Yeah, no. It's but, not just having the right setup. It's not even just yeah. having a really good delivery system. The right club. Double. Oh, I get look that. at that. Like, yeah. Life yeah. Word life clubs. Hey, yeah. speaking of word life clubs, you should check out word life youth ministries. Yeah. No, no. In all seriousness, I, I think it's, I, I think we, we neglect to figure out how many things all go together. Yeah. A part of the process. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I think it's so vitally important, Josh, yeah. that we're talking to students. Yeah. 
and to leaders. And you yeah. know what we honestly should do? Hey, if you're a youth leader out there and you want to be on the podcast, I'd love to get a youth leader's perspective. Stacking chairs pod at wol.org is our email address. Shoot me an email and uh, we'll try and work that out. Listen, we, we, we have yet to do a phone interview with somebody. And we have the, the technology. We do. They have the technology. <laughs> it was coming the moment I said it too. Yeah. That's hey, um, no, it's good. All right. All right, Kathy, here, here's my, my next question. What is something that you think you look at youth culture today? What is something that if you could say, hey, listen, youth pastors out there, pastors out there. Actually, let me ask you two different questions. Mm -hmm. Number one, what do you think is something if you could urge and encourage, not enforce, mm -hmm. but urge and encourage a youth pastor to talk about on a regular basis with students today, what would it be? First question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it would be relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When you have like a situation with someone, how would you be able to... Um, like fix that situation because I know a lot of people that they did not have as close of a friend that they could like lean on and mm, yeah. they were like spiritually like that they could help them in a, yeah. like in a godly way how to react to this problem so it could be like having a situation with your friend like things like that um, I think like relationships like dating wise is mm -hmm. also really good um, like how to make sure that you're setting the right boundaries, how to mm -hmm. be in a godly relationship, um, and sharing the gospel in school, definitely maybe mm. a big one. I yeah. have a hard time sharing the gospel in my school. Sure. But my school make fun of me for that. <laughs> but, but it's okay. Yeah, and you were telling me about that the other day, actually. And I was I like, share it. <laughs> yeah, and that that's, that's such a hard thing to go through. But at the same time, like, there's there's glory in God, yep. or glo glory to God in that. Yep. Like, yeah. you going through that trial, I mean, I went to a Christian school. I didn't go through, I might get made fun of for trying to do the right thing, but yeah. oftentimes at my Christian school, I was, I was the instigator and wasn't necessarily doing the right thing. So wow. um, never, I Shame. never would have expected, you never would have that, have expected that. I know that I get so, that a lot. I get that crazy. a lot. But I want to do that commendation, like praise the Lord that he's working through you in that way. Yeah. And you get to experience that now. And I mean, Kyle, I don't know when you got, I didn't experience that until I was probably in college where I was really trying to make that point and trying yeah. to reach friends in that way. And, yeah. and you know, that's awesome. Like as it, terrible as it sounds like the youth ministry, making that a point to share the gospel in your schools, especially right. is such a fundamental thing. And it's so important. And it's, right. it's great to see that they encourage you to do that. Yeah. My, my, my next question is, all right, let's, let's look to the bigger stage. And I know that this can be a little daunting. Okay. Let, let, the, I, again, you're not calling out pastors. You're not, you're not correcting pastors, but, but you sure. are saying, Hey, pastors, here's a young person's voice. What do you think pastors from the pulpit of the, of the congregate of the church, how could pastors speak towards something that you think would, would resonate and encourage and, and push on young people in their church? Mm. There are so many struggles that youth go through that just pastors don't think about sometimes. Like sure. it's like general ideas. Um, oh, let's see. You're also going through different things than, than generations before you've had to go through at least generations that are alive today. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I really like a lot of like, um, like the Bible says this, how can I apply this to my life? Mm -hmm. Or how do I know that like for non-believers or for mm -hmm. people that are just going to a church for the first time, I think it's like a great thing. And for me also to reflect on like the Bible is saying this, how do I know this is true? And like giving like historical background information, Okay. Like yeah. the Bible and things like that. Again, I'm going to say the gospel. Mm -hmm. I would say the gospel uh, yeah, is... That's the right answer. That's yeah. I don't think we can ever have enough of the gospel. <laughs> we can't. Absolutely. Um, I think it's really important to just share the gospel, no matter like what you're talking about. It's, yeah. it's yeah. always so important. And hmm, I think it would also be ministry. I, well, my pastor always did talk about ministry. He did give mm -hmm. a lot of sermons, but may, there's maybe some pastors out there that don't mention it as much as... Yeah. Like yeah. they should. So like when I was little, like I said, for the longest time, I was like, I'm doing this. It's just there. And I thought I was doing things right. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm doing stuff for Jesus. It's mm -hmm. great. And yeah. the action, but without the heart. Yeah. And sure. so like my pastor actually gave a message. And then when I came here to camp, they gave another message. I was like, Oh, yeah. 
okay, ministry. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit working. Yeah. I was gonna say, Josh, have you ever had one of those times where like you're you're thinking about something or you're mm -hmm. talking about, and then like you sit down and randomly you you listen to a podcast and it, it's about that, yeah, or yeah, you yeah. listen to a message or you get them. I had talked to a guy the other day. He was like, "Can I be honest with you?" I said, "Yeah, absolutely." He goes, "Dude, I was like mid conversation with a kid about like, hey, listen, you really need to trust God in this area, and like you're you're really not not allowing Him to be in con and oh." man, I need to hear this. <laughs> he, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. he said, I kept talking, but it was, it was like, God was like, keep going, but listen to what I'm saying through you because yeah. I'm saying it for you. I was yeah. like, no, that happened to me the other day. I was giving advice to somebody in here actually. And I was like, I was like, ah, this is something I need to pay attention to. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. It is cool. This Holy Spirit works Josh, what are you guys doing in your, I'm going to say your youth group. I know you're, you're not the youth pastor, yeah, yeah, yeah. but what are things that you guys are doing to, to listen and to hear from those kids? Is there anything that you guys have set up? I know you said you got like that one, one boy clay who's getting involved, but what are you Cooper. guys doing? Cooper. Cooper. Sorry, clay. Yeah. You're doing a great job too, buddy. So how do we get them in ministry? You mean yeah, in ministry, even, or, even or, hearing from them, of oh, what should we them. talk about? You oh, know, yeah, yeah. I, cause I obviously mean, it, it can be hard. Yeah. Like, well, I guess it might be different too for a youth group. I don't know how large your youth group was. I was going to ask that. Like, um, if you don't mind my asking, like how, yeah. how many kids were in there on average? It's like the most is probably like 40. Okay. So yeah. our youth group is, is, is fairly small in comparison. Like we have like eight kids on average or wow. up to 12 kids or so. Like it's, there's a, a core group of guys. So, uh, really we just, we're really intentional about just talking to them even one-on-one -on -one and just asking questions. And Matt's really good about, about kind of like feeling the beat of like what they're going through. And because there's two of us. And then, I mean, obviously like, uh, Rachel, his, Matt's wife and my wife are there at two at times in different weeks and stuff. And so we all get to kind of connect with them, but it's in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So even yeah. uh, two of the boys the other day rode their bikes by my house and came over and had dinner and just like asked them like, Hey, you know, what'd you guys think of camp? And just having those one-on-one -on -one conversations is really where we get that information nice. from. But I don't know in a larger youth group, yeah. If that's a lot harder, or do you have to be more intentional about that? Oh, I'm sure. I don't I'm know sure. What that looks now, like. that, that was the same night that when you went out the next morning, you realized they toilet papered your house too, right? <laughs> oh. No, they knew where I lived already, and they haven't done anything mean to me. Wow, yet. I know. Isn't that nice? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's loving to go and toilet paper your youth leader's it? house. It, oh, it, wow. uh, see, and now when you guys were talking about your youth group of forty and your youth group, um, it reminds me of the the time that a bunch of pastors were sitting around, kind of talking about how big their churches were, and yeah. this one guy said, "Oh, we've got we got over three thousand. This other guy goes, "Oh, we're 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 getting." close to 3000, but I want, I think by next year we'll be at 4,000. This other pastor goes, yeah, we're somewhere between, uh, probably five and 6,000. And his wife looked at him and he goes, he goes, he goes, yeah, I, I, that's, that's where we are. And she was like, she didn't want to disrespect him. And so they walked away and she said, sweetie, we only have about 550 people in our church. And he said, yes. And that's between five and 6,000. <laughs> so the know. number five yeah, and the number 6,000. Oh, I got you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Josh. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, guys, this is, I think this is so important for us to engage our youth in conversation. Yeah. And obviously not to, if you're the youth pastor out there, you're the youth leader out there. I'm not saying that whatever it is that your kids want to talk about that you just say, okay, you guys yeah, become no. the tail that wags the dog or yeah. whatever culture is going on, that that be the tail that wags the dog. Yeah. But I think there's something that allows your people to feel involved and feel a part of the process mm -hmm. when you sit down and say, Hey, let's hear from you. I, I remember, uh, one of my youth leaders, he, he fulfilled the role of the youth pastor, but our church did not have a full-time youth pastor. Um, but he built a little council, uh, starting when I was in 10th grade, I was allowed to be on it. I was on it on oh, cool. 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. And he just started asking us, Hey, what should we talk about? Hey, how should we talk about it? But then they made sure that there were some, some growth discipleship opportunities yeah. that we had to be a part of yeah. so that it wasn't just, Oh, just come in and tell us what, no, we want to make sure that you are growing in your walk yeah. and developing your, your personal steps. And then you're involved in it yeah. uh, in youth group. And um, I was involved in a group like that in high school, the way that little student awesome. leadership group. And yeah, there was like, I think six, yeah. eight of us. And yeah. yeah, it was same kind of idea. And well, I, really I, I remember uh, young life, another group great organization that's out there. Young Life mm -hmm. came through our area and, uh, you know, I, I listen, I, it's an, it's another organization. Okay. And I know you go, well, over here, it's bad over here. It's good. Listen, in my area, it was great. It was growing. Sure. God was doing the amazing thing. And they had a little select group called campaigners mm -hmm. where like you were a part of, Hey, what are we doing in this area to affect change in this community? And I yeah. thought, I, I remember sitting there at one of the meetings going, I actually have say 
over oh, cool. what this ministry is doing and how they're going yeah. to impact another school that's not even the one that I go to. And it's just kind of like this moment where you're like, phenomenal cosmic powers and even many living space. <laughs> but really, honestly, it's like, a, wow, God, I... I, I could be a person of influence. Yeah. How many times do we pray about affecting our community and influencing, but I actually had the opportunity to do something like that. Yeah. Amen. And so uh, man, I, I really challenge you guys out there to have those conversations. Uh, I, did you already ask her this, this question? I don't know. Did you No, that's, that's the one I was going to end on. Dude, go, go. All right. So, so you've been involved in youth group. Uh, you've been involved in ministry here at word of life. And so all those things, how have you seen it uh, kind of, kind of direct your career path and your your path for college. I know you still have a year to decide all those things, but have you noticed a shift in as you've grown and learned and like what you want to do for the next steps? Yeah. So the book actually for the summer, remind me what it's called again. Um, Are you kidding? How <laughs> don't, no, it's not don't wait your life. No. What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? I was like, don't waste your life. I was like, no, don't yeah. waste your life. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So <laughs> that book has been so good. Bye. J.D. Greer. J.D., anytime oh. you ever want to be on the podcast. Yeah, on J.D., come JD. On he's, he's actually an alumni of the Bible Institute. He is. Yeah. No he is. way. That is yeah. so cool. Yeah. Wow. Um, so come on, J.D., let's yeah. go. Come on. <laughs> um, so, yeah, when I started reading that book, I was like, wow, like I should really be doing like more of my life and like mm -hmm. my job should really be just to like expand God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Like I really want to work towards that. Um, so there, I just... I just, an idea I'm putting out there um, toward the Lord. Uh, I really want to study medicine. I really like medicine. Yeah. And so if there's any way for me to do med school and work out Word of Life. Oh, nice. That would be really hard. But I definitely want to do something involved with Word of Life because yeah. I love the ministry that they're doing and yeah. the opportunities that they give people. But here's the thing. There's something that's always said is, is life is ministry and, and yeah. ministry is life. Mm -hmm. And so no matter where you go vocationally, you can be involved in ministry. And that's yeah. why we always, and it's so important, we push home the idea of getting involved in your involved in your local church. Yeah. And even this week, uh, my sister-in-law is in town and she's volunteering at camp this week as a nurse. And so there are opportunities, even at Word of Life, that if you want to go to med school and do medicine and come and volunteer, or you want to be involved vocationally doing this somehow, like there are those opportunities. And I think it's really cool. But yeah. would you say, or so here's the final yeah, do it. question. No, is, do you see that those things that you've gone through, that the time at Word of Life, the time in your youth group, has that changed the direction that you've gone or have you always wanted to go in one direction or has it, you've gone in one direction and you're like, Hey, I want to make sure that I'm making sure that ministry is an important part of my life. Yeah. Um, I used to think I was just like, I'm going to work. I'm going to be the average person, go yeah. to church, serve. Um, but I really just want to like dedicate my full life to like sharing the gospel with people and evangelizing mm -hmm. and being just like, just serving somewhere that is also yeah. with fellow believers because it's just a great community to be a part of. Yeah. And it's definitely changed the way that I've been yeah. planning and on doing it. It's really, I mean, even a large portion of my ministry is just in my neighborhood, yeah. trying to reach my neighbors with the yeah. gospel and trying to, there's a neighbor across the street who uh, is a Christian as well. And uh, she was walking her dog the other day. And I, I said something about, I was like, yeah, we've been really trying to, to minister to this person. And I, I've been looking for opportunities to share the gospel more clearly because I've shared it in pieces, in mm -hmm. passing conversations, long stories. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I'm actually that neighbor. I, I've been in, interacting with them and trying to really like make it a point to share the gospel and mm. like building that community of the church yeah. in my community, like my neighborhood awesome. is just as much of a, an importance and an equal opportunity and, and I love that, that you want to be involved in ministry and realizing it's not limited to vocation. Yeah. It is very much a part of the vocational ministry, obviously, because it is yeah. our job. But being involved in ministry is not limited to those places. And yeah. I think that's a great lesson to take away. Yeah. So, well, and, and if she's great. going into the medical field, she's definitely going to need patience. <laughs> and hopefully she'll have some patience. Hey guys, uh -huh. this has been awesome. <laughs> hey, let's transition on over into small group. Small oh, group. Oh, we didn't do the. Oh, into small, small group. group. Josh, tell us about what small group is. Small group is a time where we talk about things that are impactful, things that are funny, just things that are happening in youth group. It's just like real small group that happens in youth group, except it's in a podcast and it's only a couple minutes long. Unlike my small group, which I end up using to talk for too long. And I have to be careful of that. <laughs> but today we're going to give Kathy a chance to talk about 
the impact of youth ministry. And I got to remember what I wrote down. You said an impactful uh, moment. What is an impactful moment yeah. in being involved in youth group? It would definitely be um, my small group girls. My small group girls yeah. are so awesome. I love hanging out with them, just hearing like what God has been doing in their lives mm. and like seeing what they have been doing to share the gospel and to help their friends get to Jesus. I mm. That has been incredibly wow. impactful, yeah. Kathy, thank you so much for being a Thanks, part of Kathy. this episode. I loved being here. It was so cool to have a unique perspective <laughs> from somebody who's in the midst of youth group, Those in the were midst high of youth fives. ministry. You would know that they were high fives if you watched the video and you should. Yeah. You absolutely should. So, Kathy, thank you so much for being yeah. here. We really appreciate it. Kyle, thanks so much for taking time out of camp. You got I know it, that you have a very busy schedule. Sorry, I had to step out. No, hey, that's okay, man. Hey, guys, this has been Stacking Chairs. We are so thankful that you came along with us. Listen, we just want to create cultures of conversation to see how we can better reach and impact the world for Jesus Christ by reaching youth. Amen. Stack those chairs!